ಚಕ್ಷುರಾ ಮಿಲಿತ ತಸ್ಮೇ ಶ್ರೀಗುರುವ ನಮ ಶ್ರೀ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಮನವಿಷ್ಟೂತಲೆ ಸ್ವಯಂ ರೂಪ ಕಥಾಮಯ್ಯಂ ದಾತು ಸಾಪದಂತಿ ವಂದೇಹಂ ಶ್ರೀಗುರು ಶ್ರೀಯುತಾಪದಕಮಲ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುನ್ ವೈಷ್ಣವಾಂಶ ಶ್ರೀ ರೂಪಂ ಸಾಧಜಾತ ಸಹಗನ ರಘುನಾಥ ಶುಚೀವ ಸಾಧ್ವೈತ ಸಾವದೂತ ಪರಿಜನ ಸೈತ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ದೇವಂ ಶ್ರೀರಾಧಾಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪಾದ ಸಹಗನ ಲಲಿತಾಶ್ರೀ ವಿಶಾಖಾ ಹೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕರುಣಾ ಸಿಂಧೋ ದೀನ ಬಂಧೋ ಜಗತ್ಪತೆ ಗೋಪೇಶ ಗೋಪಿಕಾಕಾಂತ ರಾಧಕಾಂತ ನಮೋಸ್ತೆ ತಪ್ತ ಕಂಚನ ಗೌರಾಂಗೀ ರಾಧೆ ವೃಂದಾವನೇಶ್ವರಿ ವೃಷಭಾನು ಸುತೇ ದೇವಿ ಪರಮಿ ಹರಿ ಪ್ರಿಯ ವಾಂಛಕಲ್ಪತುರ್ವಶ್ಯ ಕೃಪಾ ಸಿಂಧುವೈವ ಪತಿತನಾಪಾವನೇಭ್ಯೋ ವೈಷ್ಣವೇಭ್ಯೋ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ಜೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧರ ಶಿವಾಸಾದಿ ಗೌರ ಭಕ್ತವೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರೇ ಸೊ ವಿ ಆರ್ ರೀಡಿಂಗ್ ಆನ್ ಡೆನ್ ಇಸ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಪ್ರಿಸರ್ ಕಾಲ್ ಓಪನ್ ಓರ್ ಐ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪ್ರಭು yes we, yeah. we, we can start i think okay so we are on rush narayan namaskrityam naram chaiva narottamam devim sarshatim vyasam tado jaya mudvirayet nashta prayeshu abhadreshu nityam bhagavata seveya bhagavati utam shloke bhakti bhavena shtiki we are on shrimad bhagavatam second canto chapter 9 the final verse of the root verses the four chatur shloki means the four verses of shrimad bhagavatam and we are on almost towards the end of the paragraph where it starts with in the bhagavad gita that's where we start in the bhagavad gita it is stated that one can serve the lord by offering the result of one's work it does not matter what one does generally men may say that whatever they are doing is inspired by god but that is not all one should actually work on behalf of god as a servant of god the lord says in bhagavad gita 927 yat karoshi yad ashnashi yad juhoshi dadashi yat yat tapashyashi kaunteya tat kurusha madarpanam do whatever you like or whatever may be easier for you to do eat whatever you may eat sacrifice whatever you can sacrifice give whatever you may give in charity and do whatever you may undertake in penance but everything must be done for him only which means for krishna if you do business or if you accept some employment do so on behalf of the lord whatever you may eat you may offer the same to the lord and be assured that he will return the food after eating it himself he is the complete whole <clears throat> and whatever he may eat as offered by the devotee as accepted because of the devotee's love but again it is returned as prasad for the devotee so that he can be happy by eating in other words be a servant of god and live peacefully in that consciousness ultimately returning back home back to god it it is said in the skand puran yashya smrtya cha namokya tapo yagya kriya dishu nunam sampurtanatnatam ethi sadyo vande tam achitam i offer my obeisances unto him the infallible because simply by either remembering him or vibrating his holy name one can the perfection of all penances sorry one can attain the perfection of all penances sacrifices or fruitive activities and this process can be universally followed it is enjoined 
in the Bhagavatam, Akama Sarva Kama Va, Moksha Kama Udar Dihi, Tibvrena Bhakti Yogena Yajate, sorry, Yajata Purusha Puram. <clears throat> Though a person may be full of desires or have no desires, he may follow this path of infallible Bhakti Yoga for complete perfection. One need not be anxious to propitiate each and every demigod or in goddess, because the root of all of them is the personality of God. As by pouring water on the root of the tree, one serves and enli enlivens all the branches and leaves. So by rendering service unto the Supreme Lord, one automatically serves every god and goddess without extraneous effort. The Lord is all-pervading and therefore service unto him is also all-pervading. This fact is corroborated in the Skanda Puran as follows. Archita Devi Devi Shu Shanka Chakra Gadadhari Archita Sarva Deva Shiyu Yata Sarva Gato Hari When the Supreme Lord, the personality of Godhead, who carries in his hands a conch, wheel, club and lotus flower, is worshipped, certainly. All other demigods are worshipped automatically because Hari, the personality of God, it is all pervading. Therefore, in all cases, namely, nominative, objective, causative, dative, oblative, possessive, and supportive, everyone is benefited by such transcendental loving service to the Lord. The man who worships the Lord, the Lord himself, who is worshipped, the cause of which the Lord is worshipped, the source of supply, the place where such worship is done, etc. Everything is benefited by such an action. Even during the annihilation of the material world, the process of bhakti yoga can be applied. Kalena nashtu pralaye vaniyam. The Lord is worshipped in devastation because he protects the Vedas from being annihilated. He is worshipped in every millennium or yuga. As it is said in Srimad Bhagatam, Krithi Yad Dhyayato Vishnu, Trithayam Yajato Makhai, Dvat Vare Pradiyacharyayam, Kalo Tad Dhari Kirtanat. In the Vishnu Puran, it is stated, sorry, it is written, so Hanistam Mahok Chidram, Sa Moha Chasa Viprama, Yan Mohutam Shanam Vapi Vasudevam Nachintaye. If even for a moment remembrance of Vasudev, sorry, Vasudev, the Supreme Personality of God, it is missed, then it is the greatest loss. That is the greatest illusion, and that is the greatest anomaly. <clears throat> the Lord can be worshipped in all stages of life. For instance, even in the wombs of their mothers, Prahlad Maharaj and Parikshit Maharaj worship the Lord. Even in his very childhood, at the age of only five years, Dhru Maharaj worshipped the Lord. Even in full youth, Maharaj Amrish worshipped the Lord. And even at the last stage of his frustration and old age, Maharaj Dashrat worshipped the Lord. Ajamila worshipped the Lord even at the point of death. And Chittaketu worshipped the Lord in, the, in heaven and in the hell. In the Nashima Puran it is said that as the hellish inhabitants began to chant the holy name of the Lord, they began to be elevated from hell towards heaven. Durash Amuni has also supported this view. Muchate Yannam Niyuditya Narakopi, simply by chanting the holy name of the Lord, the inhabitants of all hell became released from their hellish persecution. So, the conclusion of Srimad Bhagavatam as given by Sukhdev Goswami to Maharaj Parikshit is Etan Nirvidya Namanan Ichatam Akuto Bhayam Yoginam Nirpaninitam Arir Nam Anukhirtanam. O King, it is finally decided that everyone, namely those in the renounced order of life, the mystics, and the enjoyers of the fruity work, should chant the holy name 
of the Lord fearlessly to achieve the desired success in their pursuits. Similarly, as indicated indirectly in various places and revealed scriptures, even though one is well versed in all Vedas and the scriptures, if one is not a devotee of the Supreme Lord, the personality of God, he is considered to be the lowest of mankind. In the Garuda Purana, Birhan, Naradiya Purana, and Padma Purana, the same is repeated. What is the use of Vedic knowledge and penances for one who is devoid of devotional service to the Lord? What is the comparison of thousands of prajapatis to one devotee of the Lord? Sukhdev Goswami said in the Bhagavatam 2.4.17 that neither the ascetic nor one who is greatly munificent, nor one who is famous, nor the great philosopher, nor the great occultist, nor anyone else can achieve the desired result without being engaged in the service of the Lord. Even if a place is more glorious than heaven, if there is no glorification of the Lord of Vaikuntha or his pure devotee, it should be at once be quitted. The pure devotee refuses to accept all five different types of liberation in order to be engaged in the service of the Lord. The final conclusion, therefore, is that the glories of the Lord must, always, must be always and everywhere proclaimed. One should hear about the glories of the Lord. One should chant about the glories of His glories and one should always remember his glories because that is the highest perfectional stage of life. As far as the fruity work is concerned, it is limited to an enjoyable body. As far as yoga is concerned, it is limited to the acquirement of mystic power. As far as empirical philosophy is concerned, it is limited to the attainment of transcendental knowledge. As far as the transcendental knowledge is concerned, it is limited to the attainment of salvation. Even if they are adopted, there is every chance of discrepancies in discharging the particular type of functions. By adoptions of the transcendental devotion, the service of the Lord has no limit, nor is there fear of falling down. The process automatically reaches the final stage by the grace of the Lord. In the preliminary stage of the devotional service, there is an apparent requisite for knowledge. But in the high stage, there is no necessity of such knowledge. The best and the guaranteed path of progress is therefore engagement in bhakti yoga, pure devotional service. We are going to the last paragraph. The cream of Srimad Bhagavatam is the foregoing four shlokas and sometimes squeezed out by the impersonalists for different interpretations in their favor. But it should be carefully noted that the four shlokas were first described by the personality of Godhead. And thus, the impersonalists have no scope to enter into them because he has no conception, sorry, because he has no conception of the personality of Godhead. Therefore, the impersonalists may squeeze out any interpretations from them, <clears throat> but such interpretations will never be accepted by those who are taught in the disciplic succession from Brahma, as will be clear in the following verses. Besides that, the Shruti confirms that the Supreme Absolute, sorry, Supreme Truth, the Absolute Personality of God, never reveals himself to anyone who is falsely proud of academic knowledge. The Shruti Mantra clearly says, Nayam Atma Pravachanayina Labhyo Na Medhya Na Bahuda Shruti Na Yam Evashi Vinute Te Na Labhyash Tashyashe Atma Vibhudnute Thanum Swam The whole ma <coughs> matter is explained by the Lord himself. And one who has no approach to the Lord in his personal feature can rarely understand the purport of Srimad Bhagavatam without being taught by the Bhagavatams in the disciplic succession. So, in the final section of this very powerful verse, the verse is, in short, 
that one should only search up to this. Anyway, I'll read the verse again. A person who is searching for the supreme absolute truth, the personality of God, it must certainly, <laughs> must certainly search up to this in all circumstances and in all space and time and both directly and indirectly. So in the final section, the importance, the maximum importance is given to devotional service. So going back to the purport, we started where the purport started in the Bhagavad Gita. So you find that in Bhagavad Gita, if you go to 927, a very powerful verse. Now for those who are taking notes, this verse is considered to be practical meaning of karma yoga. Yat karoshi, yad ashnashi, yad juhoshi, yad ashi, yad, yad tapashyashi kaunte yad tatkurushamadatpanam. Here Sri Prabhupada is giving an argument that some people will say, I'll only do what God inspires me. No. You have to work. You, we all have a prescribed duty of a Brahmin or a Kshatriya, Vaishya, Sudra, man, woman, a student, a teacher, and so on. Everyone has his duty. And whenever you do your duty, the results will be offered to Krishna. And that is called Karma Yoga. To, re to redefine the meaning of the word Karma Yoga means offering the results of your karma to Krishna. Krishna, Krishna. Now there are two, two different words. Many people mix it up. Karma Kanda and Karma Yoga. There are two different uh, what do you call terms altogether. See, higher than animal life is Karma Kanda. We asked you to put the Karma Kanda in our, in our scripture so that People become engaged, engaged in their religious rituals. Then after karma kanda starts the karma yoga. Karma kanda means section of karma. Kanda means section. Karma yoga means connecting your karma to Krishna. That is the meaning of the word karma yoga. So if you hear Krishna say, yad karoshi, whatever you do, yad ashnasi, whatever you eat, yad juhoshi, whatever you do, dadashi yad. Yat tapashyashi means whatever austerity you may perform, O Arjun, do it as an offering to me. That means the result of all these activities should be offered to Krishna, <clears throat> which Sri Prabhupada explains in detail. Whether you eat, whatever you sacrifice, whatever business you are doing, whatever you do, it should be offered to Krishna. Then we have beautiful quotations from other scriptures like Skanda Puran that simply by remembering Krishna, the easiest way to remember Krishna is, does anybody want to answer this question? Which is the easiest way to remember Krishna? Anybody likes to try? Uh, I, am, uh, I can try Prabhuji. Yeah. It's maybe hearing. And, hearing. Yeah. But yeah, sometimes you may not have, you may not be hearing. Maybe you are on the road. Then what other method is there? By chanting. Yes. Chanting can be done anywhere, any place. Shri Gauranga Mahaprabhu says, Eta dashi tava kripa bhagavan mama pi durta eva midarsham ihajani naraga. Starts with Nam Nam Akari Bhaudali Jishari. Oh Lord Krishna, in your names you put all your potencies, and there are no hard and fast rules to chant. It means you can chant anywhere, anytime. One person was asking me that can we chant upon waking up in the morning? We are not even taken bath, you are not even brushed your teeth. Yes, you can chant. And then when you go to your bathroom, you should, you know, whatever, I mean, to clean up your teeth or your bathing, all the time you can chant Hare Krishna. So many examples are given for chanting. That chanting, there is no fixed rules. Yes, for worship, one has to take a bath. But for chanting, no. Even without the bath, you just wash your hands and your mouth and then to feel clean and simply start chanting. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama. 
and the result of chanting we will lead you to remembrance of Krishna. So, whether you are doing penance, sacrifice, or fruitive activities, universally this rule can be followed. It's chanting of the holy name of Krishna. So, <clears throat> after that comes the words of Srimad Bhagavatam, very powerful words. Akama sarva kama va moksha kama udhari tibvrena bhakti yogena yajate purusha. Whether you have desires, whether you have no desires, or you have desire for liberation, simply worship Krishna. In, in other words, even if you have so many desires, it doesn't matter. Even if you are a, a renounced person, you have no desires, it doesn't matter. And even if you are desiring for liberation, yet Krishna has to be worshipped. Yajate purusha param. Yajate means we simply have to worship Krishna. And you'll get all the results. But don't waste your time by Yeshua Prabhupada uses propitiate different, different gods. Don't do that. Simply worship Krishna. In other words, only worship Krishna. Even in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, Sarva Dharma Paritaja Maam Ekam Sharanam Raja. Maam Ekam. Ekam means only me. Worship only me. Even man mana bhava bhakto, Krishna says only me. Many places throughout Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says only me. And throughout, throughout Bhagavatam, only Krishna has to be worshipped. That's it. If one can do that, automatically everyone else will be worshipped. When you are worshipping Krishna, all the demigods will be satisfied. All the pitrus or the ancestors will be satisfied. All the living entities, you know, throughout the world will be satisfied at one go. That's why Sri Prabhupada gives the example of a tree. By, run, by offering water at the root of the tree will nourish the entire tree. So, the Supreme Personality of God who carries the, the form of Vishnu is given. One who carries conch shell, wheel, club, lotus flower. Whenever he is worshipped, the demigods are worshipped automatically. So, in any case, be it nominative, objective, causative, dative, ablative, possessive, and supportive, in all circumstances, he should be worshipped. In this way, <clears throat> because he's the cause of all causes, and he's the supplier of everything, so only his worship should be done, and no one else is worshipped. So, during the annihilation of the material world, Krishna, Bhakti Yoga is helpful. Just like annihilation may take thousands of years, but annihilation also means that even before you die, you can simply think of Krishna. The famous Bhagavad Gita was Antakale Chamameva Smaranam Muktva Kalevaram. At the time of that, whoever remembers me will attain me without a doubt. So all you have to do is remember. Now, will you remember Krishna at the time of death? What is the guarantee? The guarantee is if you chant daily, every day, 365 days in a year, seven days a week, each day if you're chanting your rounds, guaranteed you'll remember Krishna, of which there is no doubt. Was there any activity you, which you've done daily will come naturally to you. In this way, you will remember Krishna, even if the annihilation is taking place. Now here, the quotation of the famous quotation of Bhagavatam, that in Sati Yuga, the Lord was worshipped in the form of, by using meditation. The age which, which preceded that is called Treta Yuga. People used to worship by offering a fire sacrifice called Homer. And then the age which followed, people used to worship the deity in their homes and in their temples. Now in the age of Kali Yuga, Kalo Dad Dad Dhari Kirtana, you simply have to chant the holy names of Hari. Hari means Krishna. You skip, simply have to chant at all times. The moment your eyes open in the morning, till you go to sleep at night, don't stop chanting. You may do your activities. Nobody says don't do any activities. You can do your prescribed duty. If you have any responsibility, you follow it. But simply chant Hare Krishna. 
In the Vishnu Puran, it is said, even if for a moment remembrance of Vasudeva Krishna is missed, it's the biggest loss. <clears throat> this is quoted from Vishnu Puran. If you don't remember Krishna, then it, there is no loss bigger than that. You may lose money, you may lose your wife, you may lose your your property, you may lose your anything. But the biggest loss is to is not to remember Krishna. Because if you are a person who knows the absolute truth and who knows the dharma very well, the dharma, as Rupa Goswami explains, that it has many, many rules and regulations. And all the regulations come from one regulation, or rather two regulations. Satatam Smritya Vishnu. Satatam means constantly remembering Vishnu. Vismritya na jatuti. Never to forget Vishnu. It means the meaning is the same. Always remember Krishna and never forget Krishna. That is the meaning. So imagine if you've forgotten Krishna, then there are so many mistakes we make, faults, and our mind is not always steady. But remembrance of Krishna will clear all that mess and will get the same result as continuous remembrance of Krishna. So here are some beautiful examples are given. Prahlad Maharaj and Maharaj Parikshit were able to remember Krishna while they were in the womb. Then at the age of five years, Dhru Maharaj was able to worship Krishna. In full youth, Maharaj Amrish, at the time of frustration or old age, Maharaj, what he called Maharaj, <coughs> the trust, Ajamila worshipped at the time of dying, at the critical time of leaving one's body. Ajamila worshipped Krishna. And Chittaketu worship in heaven and hell. Beautiful examples. So simply by remembering these examples, there is no time where you can't worship Krishna. Some people said, oh, I came to ISKCON very late. I should have come much earlier. No, whatever time you come, you're never late. All you have to do is start worshipping Krishna. And this, to start worshipping Krishna and to carry on worship of Krishna is to chant Hare Krishna. So, Nashima Purana, which says that in hell, when people started chanting Hare Krishna, they all started going towards heavens. This is the power of chanting the holy name. And they all became free from the hellish persecution. Who goes to hell is the people who sin. But chanting is so powerful that one will be clear of all the hellish. We can say bandhan. Bandhan means bondage. You'll be freed. All your knots will be loosened. And you'll be told, okay, go back to Krishna. Be oh, sorry, go back to the heavens. So the final conclusion of this chapter, of this particular verse is given in six sections, six lines. Sri Prabhupada says that it is finally decided, not by us, but by all the sages, that whether you are a, a renounced person, a yogi, a fruity worker, the name of Krishna has to be chanted eh, fearlessly to attain desired success in life. So you, one may be in a different stage, it doesn't matter. But simply by chanting Hare Krishna, you come to the perfection of your life. The perfection of life is at the end of the life, if you remember Krishna, that is called perfection of life. And you can't remember Krishna if you're not engaged in devotional service. So six points are given here. Rather, these are six kind of an argument. Number one, it says here that even if you are well versed in the Vedas, it means not just Bhagavad Gita or Bhagavatam, entire Vedas or all scriptures of the world. And if you are not a devotee of the Lord, then you are considered to be the lowest of mankind. It means you are Naradama. Naradama means lower than even a very sinful person. What is the use of all that knowledge? Number two, in the Garud Puran, Barahad Niradya Puran, and Padma Puran, the same is repeated. What is the use of Vedic knowledge and penances 
if it is devoid of devotional service to Krishna. Then he says, what is the comparison of thousands of Prajapatis? Prajapatis means the clan leaders. I think everybody knows Prajapati. We all ha have a grand-grandfather from whom we all come. Clan, the word uses clan, C-L-A-N. And all are connected to Brahma. We are all children of different rishis. Rishis means sages. If you tra trace back your horoscope and your roots, you'll find that you were born from a certain sage. But what is the use of all the sages if one of the sages is not a devotee of Krishna? But for your information, all the sages of Vedic culture were devotees of Krishna. Number four. It says that neither by ascetism, nor by being very charitable, nor by being very famous, or a big philosophist, or occultist, you can't get a final result without being engaged in the service of Krishna. And number five, what is a place more glorious than heaven? If there is no glorious, if, if there is no glories of the Lord of Vaikuntha, Lord of Vaikuntha means Krishna. In any place where there is no glorification of Krishna, it is a waste of time. And that place should be left as soon as possible. And the last one, a pure devotee is not interested in any kind of liberation. All five, five of them. Salukya, Samipya, Ekatva, and so on. So all those liberations are not desired by a devotee. The reason is, if he, know, if he thinks that, I mean, he very well knows that if he gets liberation, he will not be able to serve Krishna. So serving Krishna or bhakti is millions and millions times greater than become, becoming liberated. That's why the final conclusion is that one should not waste one's time, but one should hear the glories of Krishna daily. You'll find in Iskon that the devotees who don't hear the glories, they become weakened. There's a beautiful verse in the Bhagavatam that people become strong by eating grains. But a devotee who fails to hear the glories of Krishna becomes weak. Very, very famous verse. So it is said here that if you want success in anything, be it karma yoga, jnana yoga, Ashtanga Yoga, you have to worship Krishna. If you adapt the transcendental loving service of Krishna, there is no limit in devotional service, nor is there a fear of falling down. In the Bhagavad Gita, in the chapter 2, verse number 40, it says, Neha abhi kramona ashovashti pratabhayo na vidyate salpam abhi asya dharma asya trahayate mahato vayat. Even a little advancement on this path of path can save one from the most dangerous kind of fear. So there's no danger of fear about falling down. You can't fall down if you are engaged in devotional service. So these four verses, the cream of these four verses is given in the last paragraph. That sometimes the impersonists try to make a squeeze out a different interpretation, but you should note that in all four shlokas, who is speaking? Krishna, to Brahma, both are persons. And Krishna says, I, I means him. So there's no question of impersonalism. It's all personal. So these four verses should be learned in a disciplic succession by, which is coming from Brahma. In this way, the Supreme Personality of God will reveal to you and give up your false pride of your academic knowledge, of your wealth, property, whatever you have. If you go to the... Anybody has a Bhagavad Gita in their hand? Anybody? No one has a Bhagavad Gita? Okay. If you go to the 15th chapter, verse number 5, let, let me read the verse. I have it on my phone. It says, Nirmanamoha 
ಜಶಾಂ ಅಧ್ಯಾತ್ಮ ನಿತ್ಯ ವಿನಿವೃತ್ತ ಕಾಮ ದ್ವೈನ್ ದ್ವೈ ವಿಮುಕ್ತ ಸುಖ ದುಃಖ ಶಬ್ದ ಗಚ್ಚಂತ್ಯ ಮೂಢಾ ಪದ ಮಭ್ಯಂ ಥತ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಫೋರ್ಸ್ ನಂಬರ್ ಫೈವ್ ಇಟ್ ಸೈಸ್ ದೋಸ್ ಆರ್ ಫ್ರೀ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಫೋಲ್ಸ್ ಪ್ರೆಸ್ಟೀಜ್ ಇಲ್ಯೂಷನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಫೋಲ್ಸ್ ಅಸೋಸಿಯೇಷನ್ ಹೂ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ದಿ ಇಟರ್ನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಹೂ ಆರ್ ಡನ್ ವಿತ್ ಮಟ್ರಿ ಲಸ್ಟ್ ಹೂ ಆರ್ ಫ್ರೀ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದ ಡ್ಯೂಯಲಿಟೀಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪಿನೆಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಡಿಸ್ಟ್ರೆಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಹೂ ಅನ್ಬಿಲ್ಡರ್ ನೋ ಹೌ ಟು ಸರೆಂಡರ್ ಟು ದ ಸುಪ್ರೀಂ ಪರ್ಸನ್ attain to that eternal kingdom if you go to the purport you probably simplify this verse by saying that the biggest obstacle in our devotional service is to become proud give up that false pride or a false ego thinking yourself to be the lord of something or all, all that is and consider yourself to be great no give up that false ego break that false ego then it becomes easy to surrender come to this world we stay for some time and then we go yet we are so proud that i did this i collected this i made this i acquired this it will all be left here empty handed you came and empty handed you go so what what is the use of all that pride useless so here to, that is a verse of surrender remember that was 15:5 so shri prabhat says that it is a surrender which will help you to understand these four verses uh a verse is quoted from the katha upanishad nayam atma pravacharnena even if you are a good lecturer you can give good classes na me daya even if you are good intelligence na bahudesh even if you heard the lord the third what he called translation is the whole matter is explained by the lord himself that one who has no approach to the lord in his personal feature can rarely understand the purport of shiva bhagavatam without taught by devotees in the disciplic succession So unless you hear Shrimad Bhagavatam from the devotees in the disciplic section, not from anywhere, not from public speakers. In India, there are many, many places where there are public speakers which who even demand money for speaking. We should not hear from them. It is like poison in your milk. Milk is very, very wholesome. But if it's touched by the fangs of a poisonous snake, then that whole milk hold that milk is nothing but poison upon drinking that poison you'll die the meaning is even that little bhakti is there it will be gone so be very careful you hear from devotees who are in disciplic succession so in short there's nothing like devotional service so easy at the same time so sublime only difficulty is is that we don't keep our heart clear simple if you keep your heart clear <clears throat> at once you'll be able to hear sorry at once you'll be able to understand shrimad bhagavatam and engage in the worship service of krishna who is very very merciful we were just discussing about the greatness of the feet of krishna one who is engaged in the worship service can never give up the uh, the lord of feet of krishna he always remembers lord of feet of krishna and prabhat gives a very simple example it's like a merchant who leaves home to look for to become rich to look for many many riches he goes to the forest he goes to distant lands he even travels by the seas maybe even flies by the sky but when he returns home when he sees his family showing love affection all the tiredness of his journeys will be gone and it become fully relaxed in the same way the moment we take the shelter of the lotus feet of krishna we will feel not just peace but affection because we are also the part of the family of krishna hari krishna so time is up here if somebody or anyone would like to add something 
or anything which was not clear, please ask a question. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, yeah, please accept Hare my hand of yes, yes, yes. Thank you mm -hmm. so much for that uh, clarification on the three month back of uh, 2.936. Two point nine two six. Did we do it today? The, the entire day, or maybe I've had like two Simad Bhagavatam classes today. So I've not really found my time. Yeah, today to is complete two nine. my own. The worst we are doing is two nine. That is yes. Yeah. So what is yes, your question? Yes. Uh, my my question was uh, I, well, what about those uh those devotees or. We sometimes we, we are overwhelmed by seva in Krishna consciousness, and maybe we have the Bhagavatam classes, or maybe we've been attending Kirtan the entire day in the temple, and then our argument is, I, I cannot complete my rounds because uh, I have been doing those seva. Uh, is that a wise way to substitute, or what can you really advise? Well, really speaking, there is no substitution for for that. If you take on a vow of chanting your rounds, you must finish your rounds. Otherwise, you'll become weak. And if there's plenty of seva, maybe due to Diwali or something, then that is okay. But as soon as the Diwali gets over, you have to catch it up. Catch up. Yeah? Simple. If you have a bank account, and you may be putting little money in your account, but if you don't put account, money in your account for one or two months, your balance can't go up. It will remain at that point. So when you chant, you finish your round, your balance goes up in your devotion. And furthermore, it gives you a lot of confidence. And even if you are doing seva, you can still chant Hare Krishna at the back of your mind. It needs a little love, proper size. For example, you have a seva of cleaning utensils. You may have seva or cooking. You may have seva or doing kirtan. But the back of your mind, you should be chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Otherwise, it's a waste of time. Is it okay? Yes. Thank you so much. Yes. Uh, you good. should Thank read you. this verse, eighth chapter, verse number seven, Bhagavad Gita. When you get time, it's a very short purport. You'll get your answer then. Okay, thank you. I will today. Okay. Anybody has any other question? It seems nobody has any question. It looks like everybody's understood. Everybody's a pundit. <laughs> Learn it. No questions. We can end up here. Okay, Dennis, we can end up. What do we do? Yes. So, uh, thank you so much. So I'd like to uh, kindly uh, invite all the assembled devotees to kindly unmute so that we can uh, chant one Maha Mantra in glorification of uh, His Grace Rukmadas Prabhuji and all the assembled devotees and also those who will watch over the online uh, forum YouTube. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Ram Hare Ram, Ram Ram Hare. Vata Bhagavata Rubasya, Kripa Sindha Bheva Cha, Matita Nabhav Nebhyo, Vaishnavi Vyuna, Vaishnavi Thakur Ki, Jai Shri Prabhupada Ki, Jai. Hare Bo, Hare Bo. Thank you, Prabhupada. Thank you.